peanuts. I got peanuts, uh, fresh roasted peanuts, one dollar. Peanuts, peanuts. There you go, you're gonna like those. Those are nice peanuts. Peanuts. Uh, yeah. Thank you. There you go, business peanuts. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, have you ever seen street vendors in action? I mean, these guys know their business pretty well. I, I found that a lot of people oftentimes have this idea of starting a, a business. Let me share a, a business idea that I've had and uh, have you be thinking about yours. Uh, my wife and I, my wife's Karen, uh, we have uh, four boys, ages 25 to 18. And uh, my wife, about the time that my 18-year-old uh, son was born, we found that she had cancer, had lymphoma. And so as a result of the radiation and chemo, we weren't able to have more kids. Now, you might think that four was enough, but we still wanted that little girl, so we decided to adopt, and we adopted Isabella. Um, yeah, she, uh, she was actually, her birth parents were in uh, San Diego here. Now, once we adopted Isabella, any guess on what happened? Wife got pregnant, we had a girl, of course. This is Noelle. <laughs> we call her Hurricane Noelle, because she's a live wire. And uh, so this is my family. Yeah, the guy in the top right's hair is a little bit longer now. <laughs> so um, that's kind of, uh, so as a result of this adoption process, we kind of discovered it's expensive, can take years uh, to go through, and it uh, takes a lot of paperwork. So a business idea that my wife and I have had, and this is probably more of a hobby than a business, is that someday we'd love to help people navigate through that adoption process. So that's kind of our business idea. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. Would you get to the person next to you, just turn to a neighbor, and tell them about a business you have thought of starting. Just take about a minute each and share with them you know, a business concept. Go ahead and do that if you would. <laughs> now, here are five business drivers. Cash, profit, assets, growth, and people. Now, let me give you a way to remember these. If you'd stand up where you are. I know it's after lunch, we need to get the blood moving. Uh, it's kind of a hand shuck jive dance routine thing here, so um, our five drivers, cash. What's the universal sign for cash? Yeah, do that with me. Here's cash. All right, profit. We talked about two things to impact profit. What are the two? Sales up or expenses down. So do that with me. That's profit. Asset, give me a good fist pump like you mean it. Growth, we want it going up. And then people close to the heart. So let's see it. Cash, profit. Assets, growth, people. A little faster. Cash, profit, assets, growth. All right. Go ahead and have a seat. Statement for Japanese Airlines. Uh, they were founded in about 1953, so right after World War II, and kind of in their effort for company reconstruction and also to make an important point, they have this mission statement. The, Jap the Japan Airlines Group, as an overall airport transport enterprise, will act as a bridge to bring peoples, their cultures, their hearts closer together, and thus contribute to world peace and prosperity. Sounds pretty grandiose, doesn't it? I mean, as mission statements are. Um, but can they have somewhat of an impact on world peace? If you look at the way they're defining it, bringing people and cultures and hearts closer together, I think they can have a part in bringing about world peace. Here's the problem. January 19th, 2010, Japanese Airlines files for bankruptcy. So here's my point about margin and mission. Even if you have a phenomenal mission, if you can't fund that mission, there will be a limit to how far you can go with your mission. At the end of the day, we're selling something unique. If you sell something unique, people will be willing to pay for it. They'll see value in it. Um, you know, for example, Coca-Cola, you might think, well, hey, it's just sugar water. Um, I've got a sister who, if she can't get Diet Coke at a restaurant, she'll just take water. Has no interest, and I see somebody nodding, has no interest in anything but Diet Coke. So she has real brand insistence for Coke. Apple, people will wait in lines for days to get the you know, new version of an Apple phone or an iPad or whatever the new gadget might be. So these companies are selling something unique. And if you're not unique, you better be cheap. So let's look at companies that have lower, pro lower profit margins. Um, the first one might surprise you. Exxon Mobil, 8%. Now, if you looked at any of the oil companies, they actually have lower margins than the average company. 
Um, I heard somebody yell Walmart out earlier. Walmart's profit margin, 3.7%. Any guess on the 1.7% company? It's also a retailer. Costco, 1.7% profit margin. Now, I love Costco. Um, I call them the $300 store. You can't go into Costco and get out without spending at least a few hundred bucks. You don't go in to buy a slice of pizza at the front because you'll see a case of batteries that you can't live without and something else. Now, now what's interesting with Costco is Costco really is a cost club. When you go buy something at Costco, they sell it to you for what it costs them to get it in the store. The only reason they make that 1.7% is the membership fee they charge you. So literally, you are paying for the right to go buy things at cost when you go to Costco. Now, um, why the low margins for these companies? Okay, they sell volume. They, they have to sell volume if they want to make any money. But why are their margins so thin? Are they selling something unique? They're selling commodities. So commodity is something that's ubiquitous, that's universal out there. Uh, if you're going to buy a gallon of milk, you could get it at Walmart, you could get it at Target, you could get it at Costco, you could get it you know, at Kroger's, Dan's. And so they're selling commodities, therefore it's not unique, it better be cheap. Now, how do you, Cal, can you impact personally in your role, uh, impact profit? Let me give you a couple of ideas on this. One, anything you can do to sell more. We heard that last time. Guess what the second one is? Anything you can do to reduce expenses. Third, I would suggest that anything you can do to help employees understand how their daily decisions impact the financials of the organization. So help them with the final exam. So if, let me have you stand up if you would. How are you going to remember these uh, five business drivers? Uh, let, me, let me hear it and see it. So what are they? Cash, profit, assets, growth, and people. All right, thank you.